Okay, this video is a video on adding some additional embellishments to our compositions right here done in the Mood and Media die based on glossy cardstock applications. We're going to get, start going moving into things like matte papers and other types of uh, media here. So I wanted to finish these off in a uh, kind of a incremental way from um, the previous video was adding on some alcohol inks. This one's adding on some gel pen applications and I do that in very subtle ways you know in, in most of the instances um, we have little flowers right here in various um, different hue different colors down here to represent highlighting and wildflowers in the uh, meadow this one right here, I've kind of done a North Star type of thing with a white gel pen and a little bit of a pigment ink dabbed on it to give it that little bit of a glow. You can see the little gel pen uh, stars right out here and the stars reflected down in our kind of mirrored water surface. Um, in a scene like this, in a, in a set like this, we have a lot of options for glitter and metallic pens. So you get a scene like this done in warm gold tones and Watch down here, I've added in some of that glitter and metallic. See that kind of where it kind of when it catches the light, you know, you can see those inks in here kind of you know in a reflective type of quality. It's really fun when you give something something like this. I like those little details that can kind of I don't know, you want to get someone's attention, but if you want to keep it, it has to have like other aspects to enjoy in there. So Things like those metallics are really kind of fun to play around with. They're, those are pens that I would probably never buy, but since I have them in this set and these pens cost like a dime each, um, they're really great to use. This is a gel pen. I didn't do this one in this video here, but uh, previously in the Mood and Media um, video of this one, I added these white gel pen dots to represent kind of snowfall in a winter type of application. Um, most of the times I'm doing like a white gel pen to add kind of these little highlights on my tree limbs, you know, to reinforce my lighting scheme. I put those little dots on the top surfaces of things like rocks and whatnot, and just as little um, specular light within my surface of my water, you know. When you look at over a water surface, you see those little twinkly little dots. This one's supposed to be a real foggy day, you know, where there's not a lot of sunlight, so you wouldn't get a lot of sparkly dots, but it does make for a, a kind of nice, subtle texture within my water down here to have these little variations of uh, value in the form of a white dot over the gray background. So anyways, these are subtle little touches right here, but, you know, there's, sometimes they're very subtle and you can barely see them, you know, but I think overall it kind of adds to this kind of more three-dimensional aspect to your various objects in here, but as we can see, like something like these two right here, these little dots can really make a big difference, and here it makes for kind of a dominant textural kind of um, addition to the scene in the form of snow, uh, snowfall. And this one right here, just having that one little dot up in the sky like that, you know. Um, I don't know, I think it becomes the focal point of the scene. Even though the, you know, this Aurora Borealis right here is a really kind of a vibrant, radiating, you know, background uh, color scheme. That little star up there really um, stands out for me. So it can be a, something fairly significant. Um, as small as it is, so um, gel pen dots and light on dark can be a really formidable tool for your um, scenic stamping repertoire. Okay. Anyways, if you choose to watch the video, I hope you enjoy it, and thanks for tuning in. Okay, let's add some little fine tune um, highlighting and texturing touches to our scenes, okay? Now, one of the pens that I use a lot of is a white gel pen. 
Uh, but I've since come to realize that you can buy like gigantic sets of the multicolored gel pens, multi-type gel pens for a very reasonable price. Of uh, these things fluctuate in price between twenty and thirty dollars. But there's I don't know. There's a myriad of uh, brands out there online that you can pick up. Uh, I've also used the Sharpie paint pens. These ones are a little bit more opaque than, say, these cheaper brands right here, but these cheaper brands certainly serve their purpose, you know, when you can get, you know, 180 colors for, you know, 20 or 30 dollars. That's a pretty good price, so I don't, you know, have any complaints about, you know, the opacity of these types of brands right here. These ones are a little bit more translucent and watery, because what they do want is they don't want these pens to clog, you know, so these might be sitting in your, you know, your supply, you know, your supplies for a while before you kind of get around to using them. They don't want you to go to them and have them be, um, um, you know, clogged or something like that. So they make these pens a little bit um, more um, runnier and more translucent, meaning you can see through them a little bit um, more than, say, a Uniball Signo pen, which is the my brand of choice uh, for my white gel pens, you know, when I want a really crisp white dot. Okay, that being said, where do you add some highlights and scenes, okay? Now, just like in my shading video where I said, well, if you take a look at the designs, you can see where there's shade, you know, shadows and darker areas on the design, you add tone to those you know, and you kind of just reiterate the shading in here. Well, you can see the highlights and the lighter areas of these rocks in the design itself, okay? And that goes for all the designs. Well, maybe not all the designs. Some of them are kind of more silhouette, but anyway. Now, if you've toned your scene, okay, meaning I've colored my scene here with dye-based inks, if I've retained some areas of the white of the paper and not just toned everything out, those are typically the areas where I will start to add some additional highlights, okay? Now let me tell you what I'm talking about, okay? So if shadows are on the base of a rock, then highlights in theory could be on the top of the rock, all right? Now some of these areas are already just the white of the paper, so I don't really need to add some... Okay, I'm gonna have to zoom in for this video because all of my little touches are going to be like a tiny little dot, so let me zoom in here and I'll try to keep everything within the field of view. I apologize for uh, everyone watching these videos if you watched. Uh, I mean, I still kind of forget to do it, but sometimes I'm working down here and I just, I just forget of it. I get lost in the scene and I kind of working out of the field of view. But anyways, you can see where I'm going in and adding some highlights on the tops of my rocks in here. And I'm kind of starting in the lighter areas, okay? I'll start in those areas. Now, see this rock over here is in darkness, right? Um, I, maybe I can add a few little dots on it, you know, where it's kind of facing the light a little bit. Can you see that? So it's a little bit lighter on the side of the rock facing my light source. My light source typically is uh, kind of centralized in here. Okay, let's take a look at these rocks right here. Let's try to make them seem a little bit more rounded in form. If you have a highlight, you're saying that something is like my knuckle or here that's darker up, or lighter up here and it's darker down here, right? Because that's being top lit, so same thing applies. And But it doesn't have to be a mystery. All you have to do is, you know, look at the impression of the design or look at the design itself. This one's wood mounted so I could can, I can see it on here, but you can kind of see it on here, you know? I mean, here's a rock down here, okay? Let's put a few little highlights. What happens is when you're kind of getting into this and you're kind of learning how to do this, um, and I still do this too, I add too much, okay? If an if a rock is in darkness, meaning it's all in gray, probably there wouldn't be too much light reflecting off of it, but sometimes we put, you know, too many, um, too much dots, too much uh, highlighting, so I know mean, this is a rock right here, something like this, and we, you know, add too much of it, it can kind of look, you know, kind of weird or out of place, okay? 
like this one right here. See, this rock right here is in darkness, so that means there's not too much light hitting it. So if I just kind of define it a little bit like that, that looks, you know, pretty good like that. But if I add, you know, like a huge amount like that, you know, of highlighting, that kind of looks out of place, doesn't it? The beauty, the beautiful thing about gel pens and whatnot is if you don't like what you get, all you have to do is just kind of buff it right out and it'll come right off glossy cardstock. No problem. Okay. All right. So let's get a little bit. This one's a uh, 1.0 millimeter and this one's a 0.7 millimeter uh, gel pen. Maybe I want a smaller little dot on here. Something like that on the edge. Okay. Maybe that's even too much. I'll kind of blot it off a little bit with my finger. You know, just to get a, a little subtle little highlighting there. See that right there? It's that little highlighting over there. There's this rock over here. It's kind of in the shadows, but if I want to, you know, put a little bit on there, I could. If you look across your table and you look at anything plastic, I mean, this pen right here has these highlights on it, right? It's right here. These little highlights on my little pen. Like that. You can see the texture of it. That's what I'm adding. I'm adding those little highlights like that. Even, you know, on a black plastic bottle, it has this whole highlight right here, right? So that's what you're doing. It can really bring something to life, okay? Now, where else can I add it in something like this? I mean, I could, you know, if you look across a body of water. Now, this isn't a super sunny day. It's really foggy, okay? But if you want to add, you know, some what they call specular light, light that's brighter than white, kind of shimmering off the surface, you can put a few little dots in here. You know, that can kind of animate your water slightly. See that right here and here? I didn't add it down here in the shadows because we wouldn't have like light hitting it to make it sparkle in theory. Plus it would kind of stand out too much over here. But let's take a look at some of these trees. The light is coming from over here. Let's put, you know, a few little highlights on the side of this tree. Kind of facing the light. A few little dots here and there. Okay. See on the side of that tree. Here's this tree over here. It's a little bit darker up here with the background, but I have a few little highlights like this, you know. Kind of brings a little bit more of a kind of a three-dimensional visual illusion, whatever you want to call it, to those trees right there. So then the trees kind of stand out just a touch, right? Here's these trees in the background. Can we do the same thing with those? Yeah, sure. I'm not putting a big blob of this, you know, ink down. I'm just putting a little bit. This is the point one, but it's kind of, or the 1.0, but um, it's kind of crusty on there. So I'll use that aspect of it to add these smaller little dots down. I could use the point seven as well. But you can kind of manipulate these. If you have one that's really flowing and giving you too big of a dot, then you know maybe use the smaller one. Let's see that, and I'm just kind of adding those around like so, and it it kind of brings things out in terms of the dimension to me slightly. See on those trees in the distance? Here's these trees right here. I can do the same thing. Now you don't have to get so particular, like, oh my gosh, would a, would a dot be there if the light is over here? You know what I mean? It's not like that. I mean, I can kind of add that. I can just kind of go like this if I want to. It's, it's very random, okay? I don't want that type of, you know, application usually, but that's just to show that you can do that, and it doesn't look kind of out of place, okay? I am kind of, you know, I'd rather target my branch. Okay, so anyways, we have those little dots on certain branches like that. It looks like a little tiny bugs or something like that. But if you're looking at it at arm's distance, you know, like that, you know, it doesn't, it isn't so apparent. But then if you bring it up closer, you can kind of see these types of things like that. We, look at this one thing. Yeah, this is kind of a, a grayish, silvery looking, you know, color scheme. And 
there's all these different types of pens that come in these multi-colored, uh, multi-pen sets, gel pen sets. Like these two are forms of metallic. Look at the subtle difference right here. I mean, barely tell, right? I mean, I can tell a little bit, but let's see what colors these are. Okay, that's metallic. And see, this one's a slightly lighter version of it. Okay, the, I have never used these before, so I have to get them flowing. That one wasn't clogging. Or you can't even see what I'm doing here. I was going to say, this one's not clogging. I just hadn't used it, used it yet. Okay, but this is a lighter uh, silver than this one. That's not awesome. Or maybe this one's silver and that one's like pewter, I don't know. Metallic pewter, but I can add these little subtle little details like this water. I can put this little shimmering metallic in there, which would not be really very apparent, okay? Unless you're holding it up to the light, which is one of those things I really like to do sometimes. I like to add in those little details like that. Especially if you give it to someone and they can't see anything. Well, they can see the card, but upon further inspection, see that kind of that glittery. Um, let me see if I can get the angle right so you can see it. Uh, see it like like those little dots in there kind of start to illuminate. See it down here too. See that right there? Oh, here here we go. See those dots in there? So it's invisible because it's about the same value in terms of light and dark as that gray in the background, you know, that silver color. So then when it catches the light, you know, it kind of twinkles like that. So that's another, you know, real kind of fun use of something like a, a gel pen. All right, let's move along here. Okay, I'm not going to do this on all of them. This is not exactly, not that any of my videos are in, like engaging, you know, viewing, but um, as far as informational goes, I'll try to keep that going without putting everyone to sleep. Um, okay, the, this is a little meadow down here with some grassy textures. I think if I was to do this, I would hit it with some additional texture over the top of that again. But let's go with this kind of greenish, lime green color. And let's add in a few little highlights. It doesn't always have to be white pen. Okay. You can go with the same hue that's already been laid down. Kind of clustering it here and there. I'm there are some textures that I can see from the Sedge Filler stamp. So I'm kind of trying to stay within some of those clusters, but then, you know, you can just go and add wherever to. Kind of bringing the meadow to life in terms of uh, little textured touches as well. Okay, let's zoom in here. See those little dots here. I hope you can see those little dots within here. I was just using one color so far. You can kind of you know layer it and bring in some additional tones. Kind of cluster your dots in some areas and. Don't kind of space everything exactly one quarter inch apart from each other, which all of us do, me too. So you're gonna have to vary it a little bit more. And I think that looks more realistic somewhat in terms of that variation of light. Here's more of a yellow being used in here. I'm just kind of using this as highlights. I, I guess it could be little wildflowers as well. Uh, let's get this flowing here. Okay. All right. My rocks up there seem kind of light. I, I don't know if adding any, you know, light gel pen up there. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Some of these are kind of, you know, toned in all the way. Let's add a little bit of a highlight on some to make those rocks seem a little bit more three-dimensional. If everything looks really dark then, 
highlighting can look out of place because we're you know if everything's dark we're saying that you know there isn't very much light in there okay all right so that looked pretty good on some of these rocks all right let's add some of this to this highlights down in the meadow i've added in some colored dots why not mix and match a little bit more with some white like so again it can represent little flowers or highlights you know wherever you want it to be. Okay, see it kind of brings that area to life a little bit, you know, it doesn't seem so kind of flat, even though I do have lighting and texture in there. It looks a little flat, but you kind of bring this element into it like that, and there's a little bit more life in there, in my opinion. All right, let's try some gel pen just to expedite this. I I was gonna, I could use some of my shuttle art purple, but let's go with the Sharpie uh, paint pen. This is a pastel purple. It's lavender here. Okay. Th these ones have um, this little ball in here, you know, much like a metallic paint pen. Okay, now this lavender. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add. This little element of uh, maybe some lupin or something like that in the scene. A little purple, little um, wildflowers. It goes really well with the green colored skin. Everything goes well with green, though. You can add like poppies or a, something like that with orange. You can do pearly everlasting with white. Whatever you want. Whatever, whatever your favorite color is, you know. Maybe add that in as a. Uh, you know, some little, kind of subtle little details. It kind of blends in in terms of value, but in terms of hue, it does stand apart. I like it that it does both, because I don't want this to stand out too strongly. Okay, so here we go. You can see those little kind of impressionistic touches, I guess you can say. You know, these little dots of color, you know, here and there. Dots of paint, I guess. Anyways, aren't those kind of fun, you know, those little dots of color like that? It kind of brings that area to life. I mean, before, to me, it was a little bit boring. But now you add that in there. There's a little bit more life. Okay. All right, let's move on. Okay, now like I said, a lot of these are going to be very similar, so I'm not going to address every one, but here's a, I'm gonna bend this back. This is a 10 point glossy cardstock in terms of thickness. I like the 12 point one better, so that's what I recommend to everyone. But I bought all these, this type of paper when it was going out of business, this brand, and I uh, bought the 10 point, but I'd really prefer the uh, um, 12 point thickness, so get the 12 point, you know, if you're buying a ream of it, it's only a few bucks more, and over the course of, you know, a thousand scenes or whatever, you know, 800 quarter page scenes that you can do, you'll just have a much nicer surface. Okay, this is orange, and I'm adding this into, you know, Gonna go along with some of these ripples in here, Just like so. This is a warm colored scheme, right? So, um, kind of these golden um, colored schemes. I'm trying to find where I found this pen in my kit here. Uh, let's see. What color is this? This ones that have these little kind of speckles on them are the glitter varieties. I don't know if you can see that. And it looks like a gold glitter. Gold insane. Why not some gold glitter in the water? And again, it's very subtle. I, I mean, I can't even see it where I'm sitting right now. I can see it going on there, but I can't see the glitter, but Hopefully when we, yeah, see that? When you kind of hold it at a certain light. See that right in here? 
Nothing. Something. <laughs> it's like one of those things that you walk past and, you know, it, those hologram things. I'm seeing those at Halloween now a lot, um, where the faces change, you know. So anyways, something like that is kind of fun um, to add into something like this. A little crepuscular, uh, I mean, a specular lights, uh, re reflections down in the wa water. Okay. All right. So highlighting, you can see where that gel pen was used on this one right here with the snow. That's white gel pen everywhere in this one. Uh, now this one right here. Okay. This is my Aurora Borealis one. Let's do something here. Um, we used the white gel pens for highlights as um, specular light, you know, kind of reflecting off certain surfaces, highlighting on certain types of trees or certain sides of trees, uh, to be more specific. But on something like this, I mean, I, you know, this is a fairly textured and uh, finished scene, but let's do something here, okay? Oops. Let's add kind of more of a focal point here. Let's go right around here. Okay, that's my little star, and I'll add another one as a reflection down here. Something like that, maybe. It's a little bit off. <laughs> I couldn't even tell until I looked at it in the screen. Okay, here we go. All right, something like this. I'll add like a little small little speck down here, okay? It still looks a little bit off. Am I off? Maybe it's, oh, my paper's crooked here water paper. Yeah, it could be used over touch or something like that, but anyway, that's close enough for me. Okay, that'll be my main star, and I'll show you what I do with that in a second, even though this video isn't for um, based around the uh, pigment ink applications. But see this, where I'm going in here, this is adding this new layer of texture, and let's put the reflections of it. I'm not trying to match up every little exact thing, just with that larger one. Okay, let's go for, let's do go for a few little highlights on some of these rocks, okay. See those little highlights right around in here. A little bit one right there. Do one on this rock. It kind of brings things out a little bit more, doesn't it? You think? Okay, something like that. There's my little stars here and there. All right, let me do, do this one thing on this one because it might not makes sense right here why I did that one bigger so let's just take care of that right now let's hit our star there our main kind of uh, star of the scene star of the sky with a little bit of pigment ink white pigment ink okay I'm going for a very thin layer of it okay this is very dry applications like dry brushing okay don't go with a big wet blob on there look kind of funny if you do. If it does, you just kind of wipe it right off. It'll come right off. Okay, but anyways, you see that little star in the sky. I mean, that little subtle thing like that, I, I think that star makes a big statement, you know, for as small as it is. I mean, it really stands out. And it makes kind of a focal point of this overall scene. I mean, the star of the scene is kind of a the Aurora Borealis, I mean, it, this is a loud, active background in here, but you add that little star in there like that, and I think that's the anchor point. I think that's what people's eye will go straight to, and it just makes for a kind of a nice textural change in here, having that kind of little glowing little dot like that, you know, and it's kind of fun to have something like that in there. All right, so anyways, those are some gel pen applications of 
color and uh, texture and lighting. I mean, we didn't do that on all of these, but I don't want to put everyone to sleep that watches this video, so I'm going to stop right there. Um, but that can really add quite a bit to your scene in a very, and sometimes like in a very small way, it can add a, you know, kind of a big statement. So it can be something very subtle from a few little dots on the sides of some trees, you know, to just kind of rounding into form some sort of rock over there in the corner of your scene, kind of somewhat insignificant, but you know, there nonetheless, to um, a snowy texture, you know, falling everywhere within the scene to a whatever star. Is that the North Star? I don't know. It could be a planet or something like that, you know, as large as it is amongst all the other little smaller stars around it, you know, down here. We put it in the reflection as well. So anyways, gel pens are really a lot of fun in my opinion. You have that, um, you know, the uh, metallic and glitter ones, and I forget how much these pens were when I calculated, when at least when I bought it, but um, I think that was like 10 cents a pen or something like that. So not too bad, and they're working just fine for me, so um, it gives me a lot of options, you know, and I don't use like a, a, a red glitter pen, you know, very often, but when it comes in a set, you know, I never buy it a la carte, but when it comes in a set like that, I do, you know, put it to use uh, when the uh, when the situation calls for it, so um, they're a lot of fun to use, and uh, I don't know, I would recommend giving them a try. And if you don't like it, if they're on glossy cardstock, if you've used too much, like I said, you just take a paper towel. And just wipe it off and it comes right off, okay? That being said, I wouldn't send like a postcard through the mail without having sprayed it first or something like that if you do send out cards like that. I don't know too many people that send just the card like this anymore. They usually mat it and put it in an envelope or something like that, but anyways, give it a try uh, and uh, have a lot of fun with it. Keep things that as you apply your um, dots Hold it out at arm's distance, it's easy to go way overboard with it, and we always do. But if you do, have fun with it. I always say, go overboard with something, you know, then always kind of holding back, thinking that you might go too far, you know, go overboard once in a while, then you'll kind of know the maximum limit of what you should have done. And if it's something like that, just wipe it off if it's too much. All right, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed.